In this video, you'll learn about wire types, wire connections, and wire specifications for the Hunter Easy Decoder System. Wire types and distances. The wire path output of the Easy Decoder System is 24 VAC, 50, 60 Hertz, and voltage is only present on the paths when stations are active. In contrast, premium decoder systems, such as the Hunter ACC2 decoder controller, use Hunter ICD decoders that call for special wires. In a system like this, there's constant power on the two-wire path, and the voltage is 35 volts. The Easy Decoder system can use standard direct burial rated wiring. Since no polarity exists, there's no need for color-coded wiring. As a result, the connections can be made to either of the wires on the path. Although standard direct burial wire can be used, it's a best practice to use premium grade Hunter ID wire for a more robust system. The wire size determines the effective distance of the two-wire path. Here's a chart that shows the distance specifications for various wire sizes. Wire connections. Once you have the two wires you're going to use for your decoder path, you'll need to connect them to the decoder module at the controller. The Hunter PCDM decoder output module has one pair of two wire path terminals. Here you can see the two wire path being connected. The Hunter Easy DM decoder output module, on the other hand, has two paths exiting the module. This makes it ideal for larger systems where the controller is placed in a more central location on the project. You can have two separate wire paths exiting the controller to help in the layout and troubleshooting of the system. Using two paths lets you keep part of the system operational if one of the paths is under repair. It can also help balance the project so the distance from the controller to the farthest point is minimized. Splices. All wire connections on the two-wire path, including any T-splices, can use the same waterproof connectors used for solenoid connections on conventionally wired irrigation systems. Even though the Easy Decoder system does not require the use of waterproof DBRY six-splice connectors, it's a best practice to use them for connections to the two-wire path. Watch to see how you can connect an Easy One decoder to the two-wire path, followed by connecting the valve solenoid. You should have already programmed the decoder, or plan on programming with the Easy DT diagnostic tool prior to connecting to the two-wire path. Leave ample slack at each valve location for easier servicing. We recommend 5 feet, or about 1.5 meters. Your splice connection could make or break your system, so it's important to do it correctly. Be sure to have the proper wire strippers on hand for the wire you're working with. In this case, we're using 18 gauge wire, 0.8 millimeters squared in a solid strand. You'll want to use this side of the strippers. Failure to use the correct tool can lead to nicks in the wire that may lead to issues later. Before making any wire connections, make sure the power is turned off on the controller. The first thing you need to do is strip the jacket to expose the wire within. Using wire strippers, cut back the jacketing on the two wires you'll be using. Make sure to strip them back to the same length. About three quarters of an inch should be good. Take a wire from the decoder and connect it to a wire from the two-wire path. Then, connect the other wire from the decoder to the second wire on the two-wire path. Although polarity doesn't matter when making connections with Easy One decoders, it's a best practice to connect all the red wires on the decoders to the same wire on the path, and all the blue wires on the decoders to the other wire on the path. This will allow for easier troubleshooting in the future. Put the wires together so that the exposed wires are touching. Next, use a wire nut to twist the wires together, making the connection. If you're using gel filled waterproof wire nuts, your connection is now complete. If you're using a two-piece connector, check that the signal to the controller is good before inserting the wire nut and wires into the gel-filled tube. To do this, perform a manual station start from the controller to that station. If the LED on the decoder blinks, the test was successful, and you may insert the wire nut into the gel-filled tube. Be sure to push the wire nut all the way to the bottom of the tube for a moisture-resistant connection. 
A small diameter screwdriver or rigid wire can be used to help push the wire nut fully into the tube. Once you have the connections to the two wire paths secured, you can attach the solenoid to the black wires from the Easy One decoder. A handy accessory to use is the Hunter Universal Decoder Stake Kit. This kit makes for a neat installation and ensures easy access for future servicing, including wireless decoder diagnostics. Once you have the wire splices completed, it's a best practice to keep them near the top of the valves, away from the bottom of the valve box. T-splices can be a convenient way to extend the two-wire path to cover an area of the project or to add on to an existing system. Here's an example of a T-splice in a decoder system being used to reach a small area on the property. When making a T-splice, make the connection in a valve box and size the wire for the most distant decoder from the controller using the table shown earlier. Use adequate slack at the splice to ensure a reliable connection. This makes servicing the system easier in the future. Converting an existing conventional system to an easy decoder system. You can use an existing conventionally wired system to accommodate the Easy Decoder system. As long as the existing wiring is sound and you stay within the distance requirements of the wire runs, you can convert all or part of the system to an Easy Decoder system. Equipment you'll need. To do this, you'll need a multimeter for testing the wiring, colored identification tape to mark the wiring, and waterproof connectors that can accommodate a large collection of cables. Using existing wires. Separate the multi-strand cable into two groups at the controller. In one group, place wires together and mark with red identification tape. In the other group, place wires together and mark with blue identification tape. Once separated, the cable should look like this. Then. You'll need to connect them to the decoder module at the controller. Now, go to each valve box. Using the same colors, repeat the process for the incoming and outgoing cables. Using a suitable connector, attach the incoming and outgoing wires together along with a single length of wire as a tail to feed into the valve box. These tails will be used to connect the Easy One decoder to the new wires. Connecting the pump master valve terminal to the Easy Decoder system. If you'd like to program a decoder as a pump start, the Easy Decoder system makes this possible. It's an especially good solution if the pump is far from the controller. If the pump is near the controller, you could just use the pump master valve terminal and the controller and wire directly to the pump start relay. For decoder operation of a PMV output, connect a jumper wire from the PMV terminal on the controller power module to the PMV terminal on the decoder output module. You should have already programmed the decoder as a PMV prior to installation. You can also use the handheld EZDT diagnostic tool to program the PMV output. If the PMV output won't be used, or if the PMV is nearby and will be wired directly to the controller without a decoder, don't install a jumper wire. The PMV output on the controller power module will operate normally if the jumper wire is not connected. The Easy Decoder system uses typical irrigation wire and familiar waterproof connectors, making it easy to understand and install. In addition, the ability to use existing wires to convert conventional systems to two-wire is a smart feature that can make upgrading older systems much less complex. To learn more, visit HunterIrrigation.com.